When I first began writing the poems that are now in my collection, The Attitudes, they were grouped under a different working title, which was A Priest in My Attic. That was surprising, perhaps, um, given that I don't have an attic. And I also come from a very, very long line of Ulster Protestants. It was a device, of course, for examining maybe an or faith or something that hangs over you, like conscience. I've always been very intrigued by people who have strong belief or conviction. Once I actually sat down beside someone who only moments before had seen a vision of the Virgin Mary. A tornado had passed through this, this man and he was now absolutely beset by certainty. What a privilege it was to be sitting inches away from this. I couldn't feel it myself, but I could see it. And so many of the poems in the attitudes I hope are doing just that, are bearing witness to the glimmers of confidence or trust. How can we, for example, have trust in the body which shrinks or expands, that gets wrinkles, is bursting with health, or perhaps suddenly falls ill? How can we have faith in the, in the mind which both delights and deceives? that can hold on to an idea incredibly tenaciously only to drop that idea and let it scatter on the floor when new information comes in. And is it possible to have confidence in something greater than ourselves, something out there, something in the rebirthings or deaths or all the haunted and strange places with, with promise that lure us. All these questions were in my mind when I wrote these poems. The poem, I once sat plumb inside a ghost, refers to a rather odd experience on Crete, which occurred in broad daylight. One of the images in the poem is that of a guitar string being tuned up, which is to describe a kind of a heightened reality. And if I can demonstrate a chord, sounds fine, but if you play with the string, tune it up, the chord will sound nearly the same, but there's something a bit amiss. So in the poem, in the second half, each line contains a word, one word that has been tuned up. So, for example, the word jilt in the poem was originally the word jolt. I once sat plumb inside a ghost. Rather, she overlapped me, plumped my thoughts as I shrank in hers. I was pupil to her eyes, addend to her sum. I learned her name. I learned her by heart. She had me scrabbling bushes to honor her grave. The very same, I swear, could happen to you. 
the tiniest change, an umlaut cast over the air, or the twist of a guitar's peg. Listen, with just one string tinned up, each chord's single jarring knot becomes a flourish to jilt the ear. Bit by bit, perception unfields. Fresh inraids are made. Your garden, for instance, rain on every flare, black cries on the grass, the clouds of earth you turned, the seasons you set stare by. Easy, fail on your knees, offer up your priors, usher in the die light, believe the guests will come.